We welcome you to Roscoe Maples Pavilion. We're on the Stanford campus here where tonight the hometown Cardinal entertains the University of Pacific Tigers. And hello again, everybody. Barry Tompkins once more with my pal Dan Belwomany. Dan, I was just talking to Doug Oliver, the assistant coach here at Stanford. He was saying that he and the coaching staff at Stanford after the San Diego State game said, we better get back and get ready for UOP. And you know what? I think that's a pretty good idea. This is a very good basketball team Stanford's going to face tonight. Yeah, an excellent basketball team. This is a club, Barry, that not only has size, but they can shoot the three. They can defend. Well-coached, well-drilled, experienced club. And I think Stanford has to play an A game if they're going to win tonight. It's interesting. I think Stanford doesn't often have to worry about size matchups on the other side of the floor. Tonight they do battle of a couple of very good big men. Yeah, two of the better big guys in the country. And, and I think tonight you're going to see Michael Owakandi and Tim Young. Now, Tim Young's number's a little down. He does not play the full 40 minutes. Stanford plays 10, 11 people. But Mike Owakandi, here's a guy that can play inside. He can go in the interior excellent defender and just learning the game. I think somebody is going to go in the top 15 of the NBA draft. I think it's a great matchup because talking to Mike Montgomery, he said his team is playing much better defensively than it had in the past. And as to UOP, they could go low and they could go high. They're a problem for anybody they face. We're coming back. Get started after this. Fox Sports Bay Area is an outrage. They claim home teams. Fox attitude. Do we not have enough attitude for Fox? They're getting the rush the home team. <laughs> sure, they have giants, A eh? sharks and warriors, but where is ice dancing? Feel it. Now to their defending champions, Earl Clark, a newcomer at guard, picking up the slack. Adam Jacobson back after a redshirt year. We'll talk more about him with Volishko. I said that right, Danny. You, you said it beautifully. Tonight. You said it beautifully. Jason Williams and Michael Olawakandi. They call him Candyman. Excellent starting five for Pacific. For Stanford, Chris Williams and Arthur Lee in the backcourt. Peter Sauer, who is the captain this year, will be up front along with Mark Batson and, of course, the big guy, Tim Young. Mike Montgomery, who has done everything in his career at Stanford, you can see that record, 211 and 127. He's got a couple of very good years to look forward to, only a couple of seniors on this Stanford team. So this is a team that's not only going to be good this year, they're going to be good for a number of years. Yeah, th this is an excellent Stanford team. Of course, ranked in the top 10 for the first time since 1963. So Stanford looking for a big year. And there's Bobby Thomas. And talk about a guy that's done a terrific job here. Here's a guy that has really done wonders at the University of Pacific. Tough academically, does not recruit the top guys, but got a phone call from a seven foot one guy that said, I want to come to school there. And his name was Mike Olawakandi. He said, you know what? I think we're going to give this guy a scholarship. He didn't even believe he was seven feet tall, as a matter of fact. I do think it's interesting, though, know, Michael Olawakandi was now saying that He's starting to be recognized as a basketball player, not for how he got to UOP. And I think that says something about it. Yeah, it really does. He's a very strong player. And you look at the uh, at the game notes. The series goes back uh, quite a way. In fact, it has been quite a ways since Pacific has beaten Stanford. I think 1933 was the last victory for Pacific. I don't remember that game. <laughs> I don't think Sports Channel had that one, do you? That's the only game you don't remember. <laughs> Chris Weems in his uh, second year as a starter here at Stanford. Just a junior. Mike Montgomery will play a 10-man rotation, maybe even an 11-man rotation. And I think he plans to stay with that. A lot of coaches will use a 10-man rotation in the preseason and then usually go with their best eight. But I, I think Mike is going to play 10 guys right through the year. Uh, he may just do that. A, a very, very deep Stanford team. Uh, obviously a club that can substitute freely and not go down at all. And uh, they've even got one of their big freshmen uh, hurt in this game, will not play. And that's Jason Collins, a, a very highly recruited guy, 6'10 and a half. There he is in the background. You can see him. He's out two to seven weeks. And there's Tim Young, of course, one of the premier centers in the country. And uh, 15 NBA scouts at this game, Barry. They got 15 NBA scouts to watch Mike Olawakandi and Tim Young go at it head on head. And that's exactly, I think, why those scouts are here. They want to see these two match up with one another. And incidentally, so far as Stanford is concerned, they will just play head up against Olawakandi. They're not going to double down on him. They're not going to trap him. They will just play Young on Olawakandi. Olawakandi's still learning the game, really. He's only played for three years, hard though it may be to believe. Yeah, here's the key with Mike, and I've watched him play a couple of times. See if he can go toward the basket. 
Well, what he does is occasionally he receives the ball at the post and fade away, and I think he's really helping out his defender when he does that. Even against Tim Young, who's a good defender, Ola Candy's going to have to take it strong to the goal and force Young to defend. So we are set to go. Ola Candy will jump center against Mark Matson, I believe. Matson will give away a couple of inches, but probably has a little bit more vertical than Tim Young. Remember this about Pacific. Excellent three-point shooting team. They can complement their big guy because if you drop down on them, they will drill the three. Well, and that was indicated in a game. You did the game against Fresno State, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, they, they made a ton of threes. In fact, uh, Adam Jacobson made seven threes in the first half. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> against uh, Fresno State. That'll get your attention in a hurry if, if you're playing defense. Arthur Lee has uh, taken over the mantle for Brevin Knight. Those are literally some big shoes to fill. The pull-up by Weems won't go, but Young a second chance. Nice start by Tim Young. Got the best of uh, Oliver Candy there. Uh, Mike did not screen out, and Young uh, long arms and made a beautiful follow. But Matson on Williams. Try to drop it down. Matson got a hand on the ball. And Lee could control it. Here comes Jacobson, worked on by Weems. Man to man by the Cardinal. Bodies falling everywhere. That's Belisco yeah. counting yeah, and, and one. And Barry, I'll tell you this, Belisco can also shoot. Here's a guy, small forward, tough, very good rebounder, can run the perimeter, and looking for a four-point opportunity. Sauer with the foul after the shot, or during the shot. This is just good ball motion, good rotation. Velisco open, had a good look, squared up. They, see, they put Velisco on the same side as Ola Candy. So if you drop down on him, Velisco can definitely make the three if you don't guard. And a rare four-point play converted by Aaron Velisco, who's out of Santa Cruz. So is Tim Young. That's Santa right. Cruz. That's right. Well, so is Bob Murphy, who does the Stanford. There you are. We got all kinds of guys from Santa Cruz tonight. Pete Sauer for three. Off the right side, and Young runs that one down. So a couple of offensive boards early for Tim Young. Baseline, Sauer, right hand. Sauer is sort of the declared leader of the Stanford team. And that, once again, Brevin Knight ran this team last year. And Stanford looking for a stand-up guy. Here's a turnover. Arthur Lee ahead of everybody. Blocked by Ola Wakanda, rather by Williams. That was a nice recovery by Williams that time to block and keep the ball alive on the glass so that Pacific can get the rebound. He did a nice job just to trail the play and got all ball. I think Pacific has to let Ola Candy touch, get him involved and throw the ball down low. Let, let him feel the ball because the big guy really hasn't had much leather in the first half. Williams misses off the right side and Lee with a rebound for Stanford. Gets a touch, draws a man to him, weaves for three. That's the way you draw it out. They, you sure do. And, and I thought a very unselfish play by Young. See, that's the difference so far in the two teams. Young has received the ball, and when you drop down on him, he pitches the back, ball back out the weaves to set up the three-point shot. UOP has yet really to get the ball inside. They got to look for him. Tim Young doing a nice job bouncing him away from the low post. Boy, is he. He's not going to probably do what you say, a couple of feet off of where he wants to be. And the officials are letting it go. So you'll see a lot of knocking inside if that's the case. Arthur Lee missed a three, and that's going to be a foul, I believe, from behind on Velishko. Well, both these coaches are proponents of physical basketball. Yeah, this is a foul away from the ball and a good call. You'll see Velishko come in and and just body block uh, Sauer under the basket, and out of bounds, it will go to the card. Right, the man that takes the ball out of bounds is a real threat to score most of the time. Well defended that time by Pacific. This is Williams, drop it down for Sauer, turn around. This is Sauer that time. 
had a much smaller man, Jacobson, on and faded away instead of taking it toward the goal. Had an opportunity to get a close in shot and ended up with a long. It was the first touch by Oliver Conde and he converts it. Yeah, he's smooth in there, isn't he? I mean, he's very active when he receives. So I think it's a real good idea to pass in the ball. Yeah, that's a good idea. See, because he had one game this year, he went 14 of 15 from the floor. He missed one shot. And that was a dunk. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that he missed. It's true. Well, I bench him, if that's the case. <laughs> Special! Special! Drop it down for Oliver Condi again. Fast handed away by Lee from behind. Clark steps in in traffic, draws the foul. They're two very solid basketball teams. I think Pacific and the Verge are breaking into the top 25. This team won the Big West Championship last year and a very good club. And here's the movement down low and the screening away from the ball. There's a very nice screen on Young by Jacobson and just quick handed away that time by Arthur Lee. He, he did an excellent job to come in and, just, and deflect. Otherwise, that would have been an easy score for the, uh, for the Tigers. So Clark, to transfer out of College of Sequoias, still has three years to play at UOP, redshirt in his second year at College of Sequoia. Averaged 22 points in his only year, only year of junior college ball. So in addition to being able to take care of the basketball, he can score. Now the zone. Pacific will, will switch it up now. And it looks like you're going 1 2 2 zone. So good job by Lee to recognize. And the Cardinal have really not shot it uh, too well from the outside because that, that's, that's not bad right there. That, that's a high percentage shot. It's real high percentage. So Young with six points early in this ballgame. Not a good job of rotating by Pacific. I mean, they have to cover that up, obviously. You cannot give Young that kind of a look. Drop it down for Oliver Conde again. He draws a crowd. Turnaround. Nice touch. And the other thing he's learning to do, Barry, is not put the ball on the ground. He gets in trouble when he dribbles too much at the low block. He can turn, shoot. He's developed a hook shot. And uh, he's getting better and better as, uh, as time goes on. You can sure see the skills. A lot of Tim Duncan in him. That's a good guy if you, you just mention. I, he's not a Tim say. Duncan, but uh, he's, he's an excellent player. Yeah, no, he's not a Tim Duncan. You said there was a lot of Tim Duncan in it. But not all. Tim no, no, not even close. One point lead Stanford. We're coming back. Ford, some Candy, pretty nice move. Nice touch. Yeah, soft. Very good footwork. Nice turnaround and, and right over uh, Tim Young. And, and if you notice, they put Adam Jacobson, who's their top three-point shooter on the same side of the floor as Oliver Candy. So if you drop down on him, Oliver Candy will pitch the ball back out and it will open up the three-point goal. Both big guys uh, doing an incredible job so far in this ball game. So far, the Cardinal, though, has done a nice job on, uh, job on Adam Jacobson. He really not, to my recollection, had, had a point nor a shot. I'm not sure he's had too many touches, period. Young tried to force a pass. UOP got a hand on it. Deflection, it'll be the Tigers' ball. Got to get him off. See, they're going to get him. They're going to get a travel. I think. I think Bobby Thomason was thinking along with us. He felt the same thing that Jacobson had not had many touches nor shots, and they ran a plan play for him that time, but a travel before Jacobson uh, could get a look. Zone again. Weem steps in this time, and the off-balance layup will go, and it is Matson with a foul. Well, Matson has just been a punishing rebounder for the Cardinal. You know, he's uh, more experienced, uh, did go on a two-year mission, a little bit older, and he's playing excellent basketball. And still, after that two-year layoff, because of the mission, he's really only had really cumulatively less than a year because he had all kinds of injuries early last year. Didn't really get into flow until past the midway point of the season. And now five or six games here this year. And that's his only experience. So for all intent, he's still very green and learning. Maybe you got 52 now. Well, now they zone, so Mike Montgomery is going to go with Mendez. Now, this guy is a superb three-point shooter. 
can handle the ball and try to get on the same side of the floor as Tim Young, but this could really open up some outside play for Mendez. Drops it down for Young again. Young, the sweeping hook rejected. I don't imagine that happens to Tim Young very much. Not very often. And a three-second call. That's a terrific defensive set by UOP. See, here's the thing that you love with, with Oliver Candy. He blocks the shot. A, he keeps it in play. B, he doesn't foul. And C, he just has that innate ability to use the offhand and make the block. Now, this is something that's very difficult to teach. He, he has that ability to make that play, and Oliver Candy just keeps it right in the field of play for his club to get the rebound. That was a big time play. Well, we started this program by saying it's a good basketball team, and uh, not, I haven't seen anything that makes me think it's any different than that. Uh, there's a scratch on Matson's shoulder, but I think the question is is there blood? Well, you know, Matson doesn't want to come out. Mike Montgomery doesn't want to take him out of the game, but uh, by rule, he will have to sit down, and he is bleeding. Oh, yeah, that, that's obvious. You have to come out of the game. Mark Manson is a strong guy. All right, Stanford will stay man-to-man. -man. He's, he's pretty smooth at the high post. You know, he kind of runs around, makes plays. Brian Mahaffey in the ball game now, too. Clark for three. Yes. If you want to draw it up on a chalkboard on how to go in to out, I mean, that's exactly how you do it. Mahaffey received the ball. He felt pressure, kicked it out to Clark. Clark felt pressure, put it back inside, and then Mahaffey brought it back out again, and Clark makes the three. I mean, that was well executed by the Pacific Tigers. I don't think too many teams are going to match up with Stanford, especially on the low block, as well as Pacific does. This is Dan Ellswick. And let's see, we've got to reach in. I think there was a choice of calls there. Could have gotten a travel. Could have gotten a reach in. Corey Anders guilty of the foul. Take a look, see what you call. Well, again, down deep in the paint. I think you called it right there. There's the reach in. Good call as, as Anders did go in. But not many teams uh, in the Pac-10 conference or anywhere in the country will match up with Stanford. They have six or seven guys that are six, eight or better. But uh, this is one club here in, the, in Pacific uh, that, that definitely can match up with. Good effort by Young to get a hand on that ball. Mendez controlled it. Stafford getting a lot of offensive boards early in this game. This is something Arthur Lee's doing much more of, taking it to the basket. Van Elswick missed the follow and a grab foul. And what happens when you penetrate, the big guys come to help. And so when the shot is missed, it gives your team, especially your centers and forward, almost free reign to go to the basket and follow it in. And he, here's what you mentioned. He is going to the basket much better this year. And he took it in strong. Now look who came to help. Oliver Candy in there. And then and, and Van Ellswick in good position to rebound the ball and get it up and get fouled. The toughest thing to do in basketball is defend the ball on the, on the exterior. I think that's one of the more difficult things to do. Guards have to cut down penetration defensively. Pacific really playing a smothering defense here. Stanford not getting high percentage shots. Mendez for three. And Oliver Candy with a rebound. See if they can get Jacobson involved once I well, that, That's a long jumper by guy six eight eight. He can't he shoot. Can shoot it. I was just gonna say. Mahaffey is number eleven career in three-point shooting at UOP despite being 6'11". Van Elswick draws a crowd, kick out, weaves. And that's the shot you have to put down. I mean, you get a wide open three, a good look at the goal. And uh, 
If you don't make that one, all of a sudden that defense will start collapsing more and more, and UOP will continue to stay in the zone. And that is one area that Stanford has faltered in so far this year, despite the undefeated record, 16-14 Pacific. performs the Discover Card Dive Along song. An extemporaneous piece. Provided for your dialing pleasure while you call 1-800-IT-PAYS-TO and apply for your Discover Card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It pays to discover. To apply, call 1-800-IT-PAYS-TO. Accepted where you see the Nova sign. 8, 37, 29, 25. 5, 38, 24, 9. 19, 10, 20, 26. Everybody has their favorite numbers. 12, 34, 22, 3. Numbers that mean something special to them. These are the numbers of their favorite channels on TCI Cable. Your window to a world that's big enough and wide enough and deep enough to touch us all. 18, definitely 18. TCI, now there's a better way. Well, you have an opportunity to check out the very best in women's pro hoops, the superstars of the ABL. This week's ABL Game of the Week, it'll be the Columbus Quest and the Atlantic Glory. And there may be a future, uh, certainly future glory, I'll yes, tell you that. I was going to say that. <laughs> She'd definitely be on the glory team. Sunday at 4 o'clock right here on Sports Channel. Pacific by two over Stanford. Just under 12 minutes remaining first half. Jacobson with the ball. He hasn't had any looks yet tonight. Pacific has taken eight shots in the ball game, five of them beyond the arc, and the other four were just like that. And elsewhere with the rebound. That was well executed. Uh, Pacific got the shot they wanted, just couldn't get it down. Mendez, hard. And another rebound by Van Elsewhere. Been very active since he's come on from Madsen. Stanford really has done a very nice job rebounding the ball at the offensive end. It's kept them in the game because they have not shot particularly well. It's been the story of their season. They've been playing very solid defense. They just have not shot the ball. Consistent. Arthur Lee. Count the basket. That's a very confident Arthur Lee. Of course, I guess if you play against Brevin Knight for, for a while, you, you tend to, you know, you're, no, no question your game gets better. I mean, here's Arthur Lee. I mean, it's a very nice individual move and a foul. And the nice reaction because he knows his team has been struggling from the perimeter. He took it upon himself to make a play. Mark Batson will come into the ball game. Tim Young will get a blow. And David Mosley comes into the game for Stanford. And Chris Weems will sit. Mosley, another guy just looking for a little more consistency, but he too can light it up. Had some great games for Stanford last year. I know you were very high on Mosley, a, a terrific defender. And uh, very explosive at the offensive end. Another one of those guys who, uh, it's become a cliche, but I'll use it anyway. He plays bigger than his height. Jacobson's first shot, it goes down. That's almost like a layup for most guys. I mean, he, he, he shoots a little 12-footer. I mean, that, that's about an 85% shot for him. Seven, seven threes. <laughs> Eight and a half. And a half against Fresno State. And Fresno State was not zoning. They're, they're playing man to man. <laughs> and not very well. Well, <laughs> I mean, they thought that they were, they were playing it well. It's just that he had some good shots and they put him down. Well, two chances for the Cardinal and they come up empty. Here's Jacobson again for three. Look out. A little short. And going to get a foul on all of candy. Bob Thomason uh, does sit a little candy uh, about three or four minutes a half. And this is a good time to do it, especially with Young out of the game. They don't give up much in size with 6'11 Ryan Mahaffey in the game. 
Look at this rebounding edge for Stanford. That's really is what's keeping the Cardinal close. And most of those at the offensive end. Van Elswick. Nice look by Mosley. Good, good uh, reaction and execution. And a nice play. Uh, Mosley in the game and uh, right away contributes. I like that pass from the point when you're going to throw it into the post because it's impossible to give weak side help. Jacobson again for three, misses off the right side. Now but Jacobson I'm, cannot stop shooting, even though he's on the road. He cannot say to himself, uh-oh, you know what, I made seven in a row the other night and now I've missed my first two. He has to continue to look for his shot. And I think he will. Switch and they go back man man. And they like the front at the post. So, so the over the top pass may be there for the Cardinal again. And again, the penetration by Lee in the basket. Arthur Lee, Arthur Lee is a, an explosive go to the basket player. It didn't show that uh, part of his game much last year. Of course, with, with Brevin Knight here, maybe you don't have that opportunity. Well, some of the Stanford coaches were saying that he may actually be quicker to the basket. I know you're going to find it hard to believe than Brevin Knight. That is hard to believe. He, he doesn't do as much with it when he gets there. He doesn't have as many shots and as much variety. But just in terms of getting to the basket, he's quicker. Brevin hasn't been too unbelievable, has he, so far? <laughs> what a great NBA. story. It was like leading the, lead the NBA in assists. Come on, Brevin. Boy, some people passed on him and are, are saying, you know, I think we should have taken that guy. Yeah, he had missed a beat. And you have to think that Cleveland knew something, too. They trade Terrell Brandt. Yes, they did. And in comes Brevin Knight. <laughs> Mark Batson at the line. A lane violation. Stanford historically a very good free throw shooting team. Kambashoni is in the ball game now for the Cardinal too, and Arthur Lee will get a blow. You know, those are the kind of violations that you can ill afford to make. I mean, obviously, you never want to make a violation on a free throw, but you had a miss and a rebound, and now you give the Cardinal another chance at the line. Got some good first. minutes for this yeah. guy. I thought Van Ellswick played very well. He, he was a, a, a factor in, in rebounding the ball. Uh, it did a very nice job defensively. And as you said, this is a team that's 10, 11 deep. And, you know, you may get one guy that starts and doesn't do much one night, comes back the next night and does real well. Because Mike Montgomery can go to a multitude of players uh, and does not drop off much at all when he substitutes. Both teams with liberal substitution right now. They drop it down for Ola Wakandi again. Pick by Mosley. The one area, Barry, he has to make some improvement. Drops the ball down low and allows the little guys to come in and get it. Mendez won't go. Andrews with a rebound. Andrews just coming back. He's been hurt. Normally a starter coming off the bench. All conference player the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Andrews has not seen a lot of action of late because of the injury. Scott Thomas's son, coach. Volishko, score it from three. Now, Volishko made the uh, initial three. He hit a four point play at the start. Comes back and makes another three. Well, the three point shot, uh, I mean, you, you have to have people that can make that shot. I mean, to be a factor in college basketball, it's just too important. There's a nice play by the big man, Oliver Candy. Oliver Candy, rather, showing very good hands, very soft hands. I saw that St. Mary's went up and beat Fresno State at Fresno State and made 15 threes in a game. Right. <laughs> and then San Jose State comes back and beats St. Mary's. How do, how do you like that? Stan Morrison likes it. Yes, he does. We got a timeout with 7.20 remaining. It's been as advertised so far. 22-21 ball game. Stanford over Pacific. 7.20 left, and we're coming back. Where once these ancient nameplates ruled, now each of them succumbs. For paradigms doth shift when something wicked this way comes. 
Williams. Introducing an automobile that outperforms the competition everywhere, including the bottom line, the faster, sleeker, meaner GS. See it now at your Northern California Lexus dealer. In the club I belong to, every match is a championship. The club I belong to is wherever I want it to be. In the club I belong to, you never stop practicing. In the club I belong to, you get two serves, but I only need one. The club I belong to has only one rule. Wherever you play, play your best. K-Swiss. Get out of the ordinary. Rent a convertible for just $45 a day at budget. You're watching Sports Channel. Cardinal by one over the Tigers. 720 remaining first half. A reminder, we got more hoops coming your way on Monday. Danny and I will be at the new Oakland Coliseum, the Pete Newell Classic. It'll tip off at 6 o'clock with the Indiana Hoosiers and the USF Dons. And then after that, at approximately 8.30, it'll be Cal and BYU. It's the Pete Newell Classic, Monday at 6, right here on Sports Channel. I haven't been to the new Coliseum yet. I have. It's a, it, it's a beautiful facility. And, uh, and I think the Pete Newell Classic, I hope that Pete Newell Classic continues for many, many years. I mean, if you're going to honor a guy in basketball, uh, Pete Newell is the number one guy you certainly want to want to honor. I mean, he has done so much uh, to better the game, and uh, he's touched a lot of people's lives in basketball. I mean, you cannot count the number of people that he's influenced. Not mine being one of them, actually. I, I've learned, other than you, Dan, I mean it sincerely, I've learned more about basketball from Pete Newell than anybody. Polishko with his first miss, but run down by Anders and picked by Mosley. A race to the basket, knocked away from behind. Anders got a hand on it, knocked it off of Mosley, picked up by Thomason. Thomason to back this one out. Well, Velisco is not going to back it out. The numbers were not in his favor that time. Got out of control. Here's Shambi. Well, it's visit Manson and Williams are going after it inside. I want to tell you, Velisco, I like guys that dive after the ball. Didn't bother Velisco. He just dove right after it fell out of bounds. No problem. The guys on both teams play like that. Both yeah, look, these teams. Look, look at the action inside. A, a great play by Williams. Look at Velisco dive after it. Didn't bother him. Look at him. That's no problem. Coach, I'm ready to go back in. Just <laughs> let me in. My arm's in motion. I'm ready to go. Uh, Kabashoni will uh, take a seat. And Arthur Lee comes back on for Stanford. He's got a little size here against Thomas, and he, he may look at that. I think that's pretty good. See, I mean, he's, he knows one thing in his mind that if I come off the screen and no one picks me up, I'm not going to have a problem shooting the basketball because of the size advantage. Well executed by the Cardinal. Seven for Arthur Lee. Anders for three. And the other rebound. Around Young. Little Candy with the rebound. Fourth rebound for Little Candy. Now Young's not going to follow Little Candy out there. So Little Candy's got to do a little bit better job that time. Do not make a lazy pass. Young is not guarding him. Looks like he might get a foul call on Arthur Lee. I think it was away from the ball, actually. He might have gotten Mark Madsen. And they did get Mark Madsen. Well, here's, on this out of bounds, you got to be really alert for the guy taking the ball out. He might try to run a screen, run off him. Here he comes. Here he comes right here. There he is. This is the guy who took the ball out of bounds. 
That's why you coach the game. Well, you know, it's a lucky guess. We guess right again. <laughs> <laughs> Game's tied at 24. He, he does have a nice stroke. He, he sure can. I mean, when he lets it go, it looks like it's going in. Yeah, tough shot. Not too many uncontested shots in this game. That's why there's 15 NBA scouts at this game. <laughs> they know every basket is, is very difficult to attain. So Pacific with a chance to take the lead. Look out for Jacobson again. You know, a guy makes threes, and all of a sudden uh, you're going to sit there and, as a coach and you're going to say, hmm, I, I think maybe we want to get him another shot. Well, it is a physical game, too. I mean, you don't come through the paint without getting pounded. Eight seconds on the shot clock, and Oliver Candy with a nice little turnaround at the baseline. I'm not too sure, Barry, that Young did not get a piece of that ball. I thought Young was extended and may have tipped it. He's got a nice, soft touch. And he's, he has a very nice hook shot that he has not shown yet, but can also uh, employ that move. Oh, that was blocked. Yeah. Get that one. Get the, he put that in reverse. Get that out of here. Matson with no chance against Oliver Candy. Clark drives, blocked by Lee. Two on two. Mosley pull up. And a follow by Sauer. There's a hustle play. Sure is. Well, you know, Pete Sauer is, is a guy that is very adept at shooting on the outside. He can run the floor, second on this team in assists, so you know he can pass the ball and makes a terrific play there just following, following the break. Anticipate your teammate will miss the open shot, not make it. The idea is to rebound it if he doesn't make the score. About 3.30 remaining. We're tied at 26, and... Uh... At the risk of belaboring a point, it is exactly as advertised. Yeah, a terrific game. Uh, and, you know, Mike Montgomery, uh, clean, his team ranked uh, eighth or ninth in the country, and he knew that this is a very good UOP team, a team that probably, in, in, in my mind, should be in the top 25. And here's the move by Pete Sauer. Look at him run the floor, run the floor, and then with the left hand, uh, very nice to get it softly up on the tin and, and the glass for the score. Well, you know, we, Pacific has lost three games, but when you look at the losses, they certainly all fall into the forgivable loss category. They lost by one at St. Mary's, tough place to play. Then they lost in overtime to Butler in Hawaii, same tournament that Stanford was in. Then they lost to Valparaiso, leading by eight with three minutes to play and wound up losing the game on a buzzer beater. So those are their three losses. Now, remember this, as Oliver Candy makes another jump, this guy is getting better and better every time out. Now this is getting a little scary because every time out, I've seen him play a couple of times. He's better tonight, it looks like, than he was against Fresno State. Now the upside of Oliver Candy, tremendous. Sauer sticks a three. Sauer is seven. Very balanced scoring for the Stanford Cardinal. Right back to him. Good help that time, and you might get Oliver Candy for a push-up because he definitely used his arm to move Young out of there. Now that's the second foul on Oliver Candy, so he will come out for the remainder of the half. And with that, we'll take a timeout. Stanford by one, 29-28. situation now as the team fouls are now into the bonus and it was a miss on the free throw by Young. Clark takes it to the basket the other way and Williams intercepts an air pass. Well that was a nice catch he did travel. Right? It was a very tough pass to handle and uh, Pete Sauer did shuffle. Now we're going to have a break. This time we mean it. <laughs> 217 remaining it's still a 29 28 ball game for the Stanford Cardinal. Oliver Candy on the bench for Pacific and will remain there for the two minutes and 17 seconds left in the first half. Well, if you get a chance, just take a look away from the ball 
There was a ton of banging going on down on the block. Yeah, you, well, you've got some big bodies in this game, and uh, the post play has been ferocious. And, uh, this is why all of these guys, which are NBA scouts, came to this game, because Candy is senior, and a, a guy that's projected in the top 15 or 20 selections, and maybe higher, as I say, he's getting better every time out. And uh, if you're in need of a big guy, you definitely want to take a look at Mike Olawakandi. I think everybody's in need of a big guy, too. And yeah, I mean, you can always use a big guy who can play, right? I mean, doesn't matter how many you have. And he's really a nice young guy. I mean, he's a very hard worker. Uh, his work ethic is, is terrific. Look at his numbers in the last four games. Just emphasizes the point that you were making earlier. Yeah, just uh, improving in, in, in terms of all of his numbers. Uh, I, I like that 75 number there, 75% field goal percentage. So it's a real good idea to get him the ball because uh, he sure doesn't miss many shots. We, we saw Jelani McCoy a lot last year. He led the nation in field goal percentage. Most of the shots were dunks. Uh, he's very active. But what I like about Oliver Candy is he can step away. He's got a repertoire of shots. And, and you really have to like uh, his frame at 7-1 at in, in, in terms of his athletic ability and his shot blocking. Well, and I think, too, when you look at the high percentage of Jelani McCoy, he's talking three, four feet max. All of Wakandi, at least, is out there 7, 8, 10 feet. At the half, of course, we will look back on uh, a year ago here at Stanford as Brian Weber will uh, talk about Stanford basketball past and... Uh, three-minute clinic we're talking what are you talking about tonight free throw i think we're shooting. talking about uh, the lost art of uh, basketball how to shoot a free throw <laughs> it is a lost art. yes <laughs> seems easy but uh not for uh not for many players they... andrews missed the shot and williams gets it back look out jacobson for three yeah. yes did you have any doubts no no See, I mean, he squared up that time and said, oh, okay. Well, hey, guess what? I'm behind the line and I'm open. And after not getting a touch for, what, about five minutes? Yeah, he, he, had, he had a touch, and now he's, what, uh, he's got eight points? And those have all, right, like you say, but in the last minute or two. There's another guy flying out of bounds. That's everybody's on the ground. And Williams makes the steal. And here come the Tigers once again. They look out, they might start setting some street. Better jump out on him. Good move by by Young. The half feet for three. See, he, he, here's what's happening. So Jacobson comes off the screen. Young has to jump out on Jacobson. So no one is guarding Mahaffey. Now you got Mahaffey and Jacobson out there. One of those two guys are probably going to be open. And guess what? Both of them can drill the outside shot. Mahaffey at 6'11". Just has a terrific stroke. Here's what I think you almost have to do. When Jacobson comes off the screen right here, I think Young has to jump out so fast that he stops his dribble. Young has to extend himself all the way out on that screen because if you don't, Mahaffey or Jacobson will be open. Well, UOP taking advantage of what's there. Yeah, UOP, great graphic, 7 of 12 from three-point range. And, of course, Stanford has had some good looks, only 2 of 7. So they've outscored the Cardinal 21 to, to six from the three-point arc. And Jacobson, who we kept saying, you know, the guy hasn't shot the ball, he hasn't touched it, hasn't scored. All of a sudden now is on a bit of a, a bit of a roll. Well, and as soon as they start jumping out on him, they're going to give you problems down low. That's the beauty of it all, so far as Bob Thomas's team is concerned. Stanford again with a second chance. That is what is keeping them in the game. Weaves off balance, no foul. Now, the Lisco should give it up here. Now, that's, that, that's a good decision. Back it out. I like the decision. Didn't have it. Back it out. Don't get yourself in trouble. Four seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock, so they will back it out. Play for the last shot. Now, of course, this year in college basketball, you do have a five-second count if you're closely guarded. You either have to dribble or stop your dribble within five seconds, but you have to be closely guarded. There's no count on right now. Seven seconds, six. Jacobson lost the ball. And it is going to be Stanford ball. Great save. Bounce into the basket. Travel. Oh, what a magnificent play by Arthur Lee. And Madsen just lost the ball.
Well, that's bizarre. Got in the air, brought it behind his back, and came down, and that's a trap. That looks good. It did look good. Well, I don't think it would have counted, but it did look good. It did look good from our angle. I'll tell you what, that's a terrific 20 minutes of basketball by Bob Thomasonstein. And I think what's really significant is the fact that they stretched the lead with all of the candy on the bench in the last two and a half minutes. They were down one, I believe, when he went out of the game. 34-29 Pacific over Stanford at the half. Stanford. Stanford, of course, 6-0 this year, but let's take a moment and look back on a glory year last year, both men's and women's, with Brian Weber. He throws. See how he does. Not going to say anything, but I'll be the referee. He gets to the foul line. It's a pressure situation, and we're just going to watch him shoot a two-shot free throw. All right, pretty good. All right, here's the second one. See how he handles this. All right, didn't make the second one. A couple of things that I noticed, and you see it all the time. You have to go through a routine in basketball. Do the same thing consistently. The first time, he dribbled it four times. The second time, he dribbled it five times. The second time, he fell back off the line. And the first time, he stayed right on the line. So now we're going to try to work on this from a consistency standpoint, and we're going to let Bob do the same thing. All right, this time, if you're more comfortable with four dribbles, five dribbles? Five dribbles. All right, we're going to try to go five dribbles, stay on the line, and see if it works. All right, so another one-on-one -on -one situation. Okay, here we go. All right, so far, so good. That was five dribbles and on the line. All right, pretty good. If you don't pick up any point on this clinic except consistency, you'll be ahead of the game. Remember, you have to do the same thing time and time again. You may be right at the end of the game or maybe at the start of the game, maybe a lot of pressure, it may not, but there's no reason why you cannot be a 75% free throw shooter or better. All right, now we're gonna have Bob shoot one final shot. And this is, this is the, the end of the game. And this is it. He's got, he's got one shot. The, the, the score is tied. So we're going to have him go through his routine. And now he's, pre, he's focused in on doing the right thing. And we're going to try to make it a little harder. But let's see if his routine helps. All right. I blindfolded him that time and deflected him a little bit when he went up. But still, he, had, he did the same thing. Pretty good routine. So when you're practicing free throw shooting, do the same thing every time. Get a feel for the shot. After you shoot 10 or 15 of them, go ahead and blind your, blindfold yourself one time. See how it works. It might help you be a better free throw shooter. Making a difference in the community is a responsibility we all share, and the Oakland A's have always been there to lend a hand to neighbors in need. By aiding the underprivileged, supporting educational programs, and assisting local charities, A's players, coaches, and staff will continue to be active in philanthropy in the Bay Area and throughout Northern California. The Oakland A's, teaming up with the community to make a difference. In the club I belong to, every match is a championship. I know what I really like about the Tigers. If the low post is available, I'll take it low. If, he, if it's covered up, they'll go high. Yeah, they're, they're an in and out team and, and uh, well suited uh, to go either way. Nice move by uh, Oliver Candy there. And uh, here's Arthur Lee coming right off the screen. I thought Arthur had a very strong first half, drove to the basket well, and made a nice jumper there coming off, coming off a pick. 52% shooting for UOP and 7 of 13 beyond the arc. Stanford, as it has much of the season, continuing to struggle on the offensive end. They have outboarded UOP, although UOP, remember that, I believe it was 13 to 4 at one time in the rebounds. So that has uh, closed up considerably. Four blocks, three of them by Oliver Candy been a great matchup and UOP leads it by five second half coming up when we get back first half for the University of Pacific Tigers and uh, they're not awed at all about playing here at Maples Pavilion which is a historically tough place on a visiting team yes it is I mean it, this is difficult to come in here and win uh, Mike Montgomery and his Cardinals have had uh, really great success here uh, playing at home 
Seeing two of the, of the finer big guys in the country, and we have not been disappointed. I mean, they have both played well, but this guy right here, Mike Olabokandi, had, uh, I, I think, an excellent first half. And uh, Tim Young started great, but I think Olabokandi may, you know, he caught up to him and may have passed him a bit uh, late in the first half as you look at the number. Look at the block shots. That's been the big difference between the two. And a rebound, six for, or rather three for Young, five for Olabokandi. I think what's significant is Tim Young made his first three shots and they were in the first two or three minutes of the game and I believe got all three of his rebounds in the first two or three minutes of the game too and after that it was empty. Now, now the one thing you have to remember is that Oliver Candy does have the two fouls. They go to him right now for the turnaround. Sauer with a rebound. Now Mike Montgomery one of the master coaches in the country you know he's going to go right back to Young. See I think that is excellent basketball. Mike makes great adjustments and he said hey Tim this guy that's guarding you has got two fouls so when we come down the floor he told all the guys let's get the ball to Tim Young and have Young go right at the basket and see if he can pick up that third foul early on Oliver Candy. Well Oliver Candy remember did not play 16 games last year. That's a foul on a three point shot I believe. Are they going to say it's three points. Yes. Three shots coming for Clark. Yeah, the, the other thing you have to remember about the success at UOP last year was that Adam Jacobson was hurt most of the year. Didn't even play. This club was 24 and six, won the Big West Championship, lost in the first round of the NCAAs, but still uh, a very formidable team. Yeah, especially when you consider, as you said, Jacobson out the entire season except for the first two games, and Oliver Condi missing. I said 16, I think it was 14 games that he missed. He played in 19. And I think Bobby uh, Thomason has done a masterful job at, at UOP. I mean, not easy to recruit there either. Just like Stanford, very high academic standards. Uh, so, you know, they, both of these schools can't go after everybody that they would like to recruit. Yet, uh, they've been able to have a, a, an excellent program. And Bobby has done a terrific job this year in recruiting. He's got a very good incoming class. In fact, he signed five guys, Barry. And he signed three from Nebraska. He signed one from Oregon, who's a guy by the name of uh, Tom Johnson, who's a, a 6'10 guy. And uh, he has signed a couple of guys from uh, Carmel, Indiana. Andy and Matt Abernathy. Remember Tom Abernathy played with the sure Warriors for the sons of, of Tom Abernathy. Oh, there you are. I'll tell you, Mike Hahn, the guy he signed out of Lincoln uh, Northeast in Nebraska, uh, his club has won the state championship the last two years. So he's, he's getting some excellent players. Well, it's a beautiful campus up in Stockton and an excellent place to go to school. You went there. I went here and I got my master's here, as a matter of fact. Yes, I did. It's a little known fact. And, uh, <laughs> no, no more. No more. Sour. Cut off at the pass by Williams. A little lazy pass there, but Young got it back to Sauer. It's a tough shot. And the follow by Matson. No, Williams with a rebound. Well, they are bumping each other inside. I think you have to look inside, try to get the ball down low. See, I wouldn't guard him out here. Good job by Young to step off and, and get some space. Williams had it blocked by Manson. Sauer with a pulling it out of the air. Let's see if the Tigers go back zone right away. They, they did the last time. Oh, that was a nifty pass. And Williams for three. Oh, I like the Arthur Lee play. Let's do a 360 and find the open guy. Arthur Lee really has stepped right in to the quarterback role on this team. He's playing with confidence. Now over the top is open again. Woo. Nice blast by Velisco. Got to give some help. See, it's hard to give help when you bring that weak side offensive player to the foul line. There's no one there. Well executed by the Tigers. Mark Batson right now is uh, being guarded by Oliver Candy, and there is Young. Well, that's a nice adjustment by Bob Thomason because he knows Young is very strong with his back to the basket. And he's going to switch it up and put his guy with foul trouble and put him on a forward, not a center. Of course, not bad uh, down low either. No, and strong. Arguably as strong as Tim Young. Got a foul going the other way. Oh. They got Williams. And the half. 
Jaffe will come off the bench. That's Williams' third foul, so he will have to sit. Yeah, talk about a strong bench for both teams. Uh, Mahaffey, what a first half he had. I mean, he made a, he made, I think it was two for two, had some rebounds. I mean, he played a superb first half. Now the zone. And they're going to zone it up because they want to keep Oliver Candy out of foul trouble. Weems, the floater in the lane. No. And Oliver Candy rips down the rebound. There's Clark. Tried to float it up over Lee. They got Lee on a block. And Lee doesn't quite agree with that. Clark way out of control, but Lee didn't quite get the foot down. Third foul on Arthur Lee, and that could be a factor, too. Well, you definitely play defense with your feet, and, and it really didn't look like much of a foul. I mean, I can see why Arthur Lee is chagrined on that call. He tried to back out of there and not make any contact. That could have gone either way. I mean, if they call a travel in that, in that situation, UOP's not happy, but... Instead, they call the foul. So Clark gets one of the two. And Mike Montgomery not, not happy with the call. Now Lee has to play under control. He's emotional. He didn't like the, the last couple of calls, but he, he cannot make mistakes not the offensive way. Well, Reeves made the last one. Yeah. And got this one. He really didn't really square up either. Now, Weems, another bright young guy. I mean, he's, he's a classy guy, and he's coming right off screen. Now, that's the one thing that Stanford has lacked is that perimeter J. They get that one down and look out because they could score close to the goal. And the battle on the block continues. Oliva Candy, fall away. <laughs> Tell me, that's not an easy shot here. That's a tough shot. And you know, there's a little bumping going on. Beautiful pass by Lee. And I think that was more Young just missing it than Oliver Candy getting a hand on it. I think Young anticipated contact. It didn't get any and just overextended. There's the lob again. Good job by Young to step in front. And we got a timeout. 15-37 remaining, and Pacific continues to lead it. It's UOP 41, Stanford 39. Ford celebrates the action heroes of everyday life with Ford Escort. Ford did a really good job with the design. It's fun and it's cute. Lease an Escort for $199 a month for 24 months with only $500 down. I made the right decision when I got my Ford Escort. With dual airbags, driver's remote entry, AM FM stereo, air, and a whole lot more. Lease it for only $199 a month for 24 months. It was a great deal. See your California Ford dealer. Tell him you're an action hero. California! Action heroes! Get out of the ordinary. Rent a convertible for just $45 a day at budget. I want boom, dot, boom, doom. Why do you want to look at my Discover card statement? It's mine. I live in New York City. Of course, I love the theater. Bring in the noise. You know, it's my favorite show. I go there as often as I can, trying to steal another step. They make, my kids want me to be more risky. Come to Gasson stuff is, you know, it's risky. I want a cash back bonus. How many credit cards make a statement like that? It pays to discover. Use it where you see the Nova sign. Mm -hmm. You're watching Sports Channel. Two point Pacific lead, 15 37 remaining in the ball game. Well, Chris Weems off the perimeter. Didn't really get too good a look here. Had a floating three. Yeah, came off. Uh... As you said, didn't really square up, but he's made a couple of them in the second half, and that, that certainly bolsters the Cardinal attack when they can get uh, long-range Jays to go down. Chris Lee, or rather Arthur Lee, playing with three fouls will remain out there, and here is the field goal shooting. As you see, Stanford has taken 17 more shots than Pacific, and yet the Tigers lead by two. 
Got Young on the foul and a push. First personal foul on Tim Young. Now you have to watch out on this out of bounds, Barry, because Jacobson again taking the ball out of bounds. Remember the last time he hit a three. So they will definitely try to run some screens for him, and here he comes. He's going to come the other way. There Barry. he is. A little short with it that time. Williams the rebound. Right idea, wrong execution. Lee pulls the trigger. In and out. And that's going to be Ola Condi, I believe, and that's going to be his third. Now the, the one thing Mike Oliver can has to do a bit better job of is positioning inside when the shot is taken. He let Tim Young get on the inside, and it's tough to rebound from the outside position against a guy 7-7-1. Seven, seven, so you have to get in there and screen people out and get better position defensively. So again, it is Oliver Candy guarding Madsen. Mahaffey guarding Young, and that's Madsen over Oliver Candy, and Young with a follow, and it's blocked. But they're going to say goaltending on Oliver Candy up on the downward arc. Yes, some smart execution by the Cardinal. And I think Madsen has the luxury to take the ball toward the goal. He doesn't have to shoot it that quick. He's trying to make a tough shot, and of course, Young on the weak side. Mahaffey did not screen him out. And a nice follow by Tim Young. Game tied at 41. Clark gets in amongst the trees. To Ola Candy won't go. Rebound sour. Here come the Cardinal. Lee pushes. Offense. Well, and, and that's a tough foul. Arthur Lee, a little bit out of control. A smart play by Jacobson. Jacobson looking for the charge. And Arthur Lee did not come to the jump stop, tried to overextend his dribble a bit, was trying to get the ball to Tim Young and did make some contact and now has the four fouls. And yep. interestingly enough, McDonald was at the bench waiting to come in at the scorer's table, I should say, and Lee committed his fourth foul before McDonald could get into the game. Now he comes in, but Lee will have to sit, I would think, for quite a while. McDonald just a freshman, but freshman with a future. That comes from a basketball family. His dad, Glenn McDonald, played at Long Beach State. And terrific all-around player. So Mike certainly uh, has the pedigree. Drop it down for Oliver Candy. The fall away. Got it. Uh, see, touch. I, I didn't think he could make that one. Hey, there you are. Let's, let's, let's fall away from about 15. Oliver Candy with 14. And they have been easy. No, he, he's earned every one. Now, I think they got to go back to Madsen. Go ahead and throw it down there. Get position. Drop it down to Young. Now McDonald is open. He can shoot it. Happy the rebound. I like the fact, though, that McDonald looked for that shot. I mean, he just came into the game. Very tough coming in late in the game in a, in a uh, very close ball game. But uh, he had the uh, courage to go ahead and shoot that ball. Velisco for three. No, it was a rainbow. Going to get my happy behind. Second foul on Mahaffey. A little candy playing with three. Arthur Lee on the bench for Stanford with four. Sauer comes out. Mosley comes in. The Cardinal will go a little bit smaller. Yeah, they're going to go three guards. So they may have to extend a little bit more, have a better offensive team on the floor in terms of perimeter shooting. And the UAP will stay in the zone. Weems pulls the trigger. Won't go. A little candy, no rebound. It almost looked like Jacobson was playing wings man to man and everybody else was zoning. Drop it down for Oliver Candy again. Whistle blows before the basket. Got Tim Young on a grab, his second. Now Velisco taking the ball out of bounds. He, he's also. A, a terrific three-point shooter. So you have to be alert once they get it in that they may run some screens for him. They got Weems bumping Anders from behind. Fouls mounting here. Each team with five now. Now they switched the out-of-bounds play. Drop it to Oliver Candy. Young, good job to move him off his spot. Puts it on the floor and the tournament. Oh! You didn't think he had that one either, did you? No. 
Well, right now he's eating Tim Young's lunch. Well, you have to love his ability to put it on the ground and make outside shots. I mean, you know he can play around a goal. Has not shown the hook shot yet tonight, but but has that in his repertoire also. Mosley for three, yes. Well, this is a December game with March intensity. Yeah, no question. This is uh, this is really a high-level basketball game. These two good teams. Say this: Both these teams playing good defense. Every shot has been earned. No easy open court breakaway scores in this one. You, you, there's another tough shot, well defended. These are two, two good defensive teams. So Stanford with the ball and a chance to take the lead. And going down hard away from the ball was Mosley. I don't know if he got pushed. Recovered nicely though, but missed the three. And the rebound batted around. Jacobson finally controlled it. And we're going to get a reach in foul. I believe they're going to get Chris Weems. Yeah, the one Achilles, Barry, for the Pacific Tigers has, has been their rebounding. They, they have not been able to clear it quickly. They, uh, the Cardinal has had some second and third efforts. Pacific leads by one, 11 49 remaining. Don't go away. Don't want to make a big deal about it. You know, we try to stay up. We've been working real hard, and we know the people at Fox Sports Bay Area are gonna call. Yeah, they got Giants, A's, Warriors, and Sharks. Plus, 24 hours of your favorite sports programming, home teams, Fox Attitude. Hey, Kelly, wanna go see a Fox Sports Bay Area call? Super great! Coming soon, Sports Channel becomes Fox Sports Bay Area. <laughs> They'll call. Don't let El Nino catch you unprepared. Bottom! At Fremont Ford, make your choice from over 100 Mustangs. Convertibles, GTs, Cobras, and the Ultimate Mustang by Celine. Select a brand new 98 model for only $15,888. They include automatic transmission, air conditioning, cassette with CD player, aluminum wheels, and a rear spoiler. All for only $15,888. Don't miss our exit next to the New Park Shopping Mall. If you see Mama, will you tell her to call home at Fremont Ford? Every year at this time, folks at Southwest Airlines get together to cook dinner at the Ronald McDonald House. Request clearance for landing. It's a special home where families can stay while their seriously ill children undergo treatment at a nearby hospital. The Ronald McDonald Houses are Southwest Airlines' primary charity. Thanks to your support, these children receive a special gift every day of the year. A gift of hope. From our families to yours, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you, too. You're watching Sports Channel. Pacific leads by one, 11.49. The Candyman is bringing it. Yeah, the Candyman's doing it. Uh, here you see him with a fade that he, that he gets uh, all net, which is not a bad move. Now, the guy's 7-1. Now, he, here he is going to put the ball on the ground. Going left, by the way, for a right-hander. Turn and then drill it. Eight out of 12. And uh, he's put on a show tonight, hasn't he? Put on a show for 15 Scots. Our statistician, Dave Feldman, was just telling me that he's been watching the Scots, and every time he makes a play like that, they all kind of yeah. look at each other they and go, say, mm. that wasn't bad. No, did you see that one? <laughs> They're all trying to sit there and say, well, you know, the guy's really not all that good. I, I don't think we'd take him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and your point is well taken. I mean, he gets better every game. Well, even, even the Stanford coach was talking to them before the game, asking about all the candy. They said, you know, he's a guy, if you can afford to take him in the first round, early in the first round, and wait two or three years on him, you're going to have something special. And you may not have to wait long. Young missed a shot. I like the move, just no finish. See if they go right back to him. And they do. And he draws the foul. You know the thing you like about him, too? Quickness with the ball. I mean, you notice how he receives and makes a move, and he has footwork and ability to get that shot up in a hurry. Well, they caught a foul on Mosley, who was helping out. And Oliver Candy would go to the free throw line. Yeah, they, they talk about his work ethic, too. And you got a guy 7 1 who doesn't have much experience, who has a terrific worth at work ethic, and you got to look twice. Thing he is not though is, is a 
is an adept free throw shooter. See, he steps off the line. Well, we got to get him a copy of your Yeah, oh, sure, that's what we got to do. <laughs> so th this is what you call improvement at 4, 10, 19. But has been uh, streaky at best from the foul line. I think he's a 55, 56% free throw shooter. Well, it worked out okay for that guy who plays in Los Angeles. Yeah, <laughs> I guess maybe you don't have to shoot your free throws that great. Weems for three. And Stanford leads. Chris Weems with 12. After having only one field goal in the first half. And they're looking low again. Open Polishko blocked by Weems. Oh, nice play. And Weems turn around, got it. Wow, what, what a tremendous block and a marvelous offensive play by Weems. I mean, he has really motivated the Cardinal and given them a lift. Well, he's got 14 points now. And he struggled in the first half. One for five. He had two points in the first half, so 12 points in the first nine and a half minutes of the second half. This is just a great case here of defense creating offense, a terrific shot block. And then Weems is going to do it both ways. Not only get the block at one end, but go ahead and come down the other and score. And Stanford is jacked up. Remember, the emotional leader of this team clearly last year was Brevin Knight. And it's been a team that has been in search of a leader. And Pete Sauer is the guy who really has assumed that mantle, being named the captain. But it's a team, collectively, very quiet personality. You see the big difference, uh, first half from second half. I mean, Stanford's making their threes, and Pacific yet to get one in. I mean, Weems just put on a, a clinic on how to defend and then not only get a block, but get to the other end and finish the play. out of a timeout. It's really important to get your team refocused. And Pacific needs a productive trip. There's the hook. There's the hook. Count it, and he'll go to the line. I mean, that's just, he is showing the whole repertoire here tonight. This guy's big time. Good timeout by Bob Thomas. His team reeling from Stanford's ability to block and make the three. They come right back out, timeout, and they go inside to their money guy, and, and he shows you the hook, gets the foul, and finishes the play. There's the bumping, the movement, and, and the nice hook jumping off of that left foot. Kind of like the way he moves to the ball, too, to take that pass. 19 for Oliver Candy. One point lead Stanford with the ball. Now back to the end of hand. Seaton in the ball game. Not in this house. Not tonight. Again, the candy man with help from the weak side. And you take it in there and you have to be alert. He's got very good timing. Only thing he did wrong there, he hit it too hard. Knocked it out of bounds. Got to keep it in play. Fourth block. Throwing it out of Seaton again. Mosley for three. And they are lighting it up beyond the arc. Now David Mosley has put on a show on both ends at both ends yeah not only with his defense but knocking down the open J making shots playing hard and a travel Clark a little bit of indecision and Bob Thomason wants another 20 with 922 left and Stanford right now on fire and again, it's been guys coming off the bench uh, that, that have really helped the Cardinal. Here's Mosley, and, and he gets a real good look as a UOP trying to help out inside, just not able to rotate over to David, and, and he makes the open jumper. I think a good timeout again by, by UOP. I mean, they, need, they, they feel right now that, that Stanford putting on a run. They need a productive trip down the floor. They need to regroup. Get them, get them re-energized. Well, it has been a well-played game. Good players playing well. 
What a reminder, the Newell Classic Monday. We'll be over there for a double dip. We start at 6 o'clock. It'll be the Indiana Hoosiers and the USF Dons. And then the second half of the double dip, BYU and California. Right back to Young. That, that's a good pass. Let him go inside. You don't see that call too often. They're going to oh, get yeah. and, and, and smiling. That's the old, that's the old, and I know you remember this guy. That's the old Oscar Robertson. I'm Absolutely. Gonna hook, I'm going to hook you on the baseline. That's right. That's right. Tim Young has picked up his fourth foul. Got to get him out quick. And see, they couldn't. Now, you've got to go right at Young. Wh whomever Young is guarding, they couldn't get to the, uh, Van Elzer couldn't get in fast enough. They've got to do it right now. Now you take it right is. to the basket. Oh, this, yeah, Oliver, it. He's got to learn. Give it to him again. Bring it right back to Oliver Candy. Still plenty of time to bring Oliver Candy away from the basket. Now they drop down again. And Williams takes the jump, makes the shot. But I think Bobby Thomason would have rather had it another way. But he'll take he'll take his score. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. You'd better make it. It's one of those. It's Williams' first basket. Got a foul. They're going to get Thompson on a grab. Thomason on a grab. And now Van Elswick will come into the game, and they will get Young out with four fouls. That was a tough fourth foul on, on Tim Young. I mean, you, you don't see that called very often. The old hook by a guy 7-1 going to the baseline. <laughs> with a size advantage on Thomas. They, they might try to isolate Weems, let him put it on the ground, create his dribble. Andrew's got a hand on that ball, but it's controlled by Seaton. Knocked away from behind. Loose ball. Williams gets a hand on it. Still loose. And he traveled. Rolled over with the ball. Yeah, it's, a, that, it's a tough one for a big guy on the ground. You just cannot be moving your feet. You have to be absolutely stationary because as soon as you move, you'll get that travel call. Two-point lead. Stanford, they'll have the ball when we come back right after this. I belong to doesn't have an address. You won't find it on a map. You can't drive there. And yet the faster you run, the closer you are. You don't need an opponent or a crowd. Just a racket and a ball. You don't need directions, just dedication. And once you're in, there's no end where you can go. K-Swiss. 8-37-29-25. 5, 38, 24, 9, 19, 10, 20, 26. Everybody has their favorite numbers. 12, 34, 22, 3. Numbers that mean something special to them. These are the numbers of their favorite channels on TCI Cable. Your window to a world that's big enough and wide enough and deep enough to touch us all. 18, definitely 18. TCI, now there's a better way. 52-50 Stanford, they'll have the ball. Let's watch that foul, or was it, on Tim Young? Yeah, here, here's Young, now he's gonna reach around with his right hand on William. Now that was the foul call. Now see, I, you know, you're letting them bump, you gotta let them play there. I, I really, personally don't like the call. Uh, it's really a tough call on Tim Young after you let a lot go inside, and it's kind of a a, a very marginal call as you look at the uh, Young with four, Little Candy with three, and. Uh, of course, Arthur Lee, the, the fine point guard uh, for the Cardinal, also with four fouls. McDonald doing an incredible job since coming on for Arthur Lee of running this Stanford offense. Yeah. Weems, tough shot. Oh, got it! Right, Weems has been unbelievable here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, he has just taken it upon himself to make plays and big shots. They're going to look to Jacobson this time, I believe. 
That would be a very good call. Man. Again, Tompkins with the right call. Here Jacobson. It was just well defended by, by the Cardinal. This time away from the ball. Yeah. Now it's going to be a bonus. Two shots. Yeah. Tenth team foul on Mike Montgomery's Cardinal. I mean, the, the negative for UOP is that uh, Mike Oliver Candy's not a very good free throw shooter. Well, I mean, in he's fact, had a good night, but uh, he's a guy that in many cases, Bob Thomason. A little reluctant to keep in the game late when he knows that the opposition is going to foul in a tight game. As a team, in fact, Pacific has not shot at all 57% on the season. And that's not too good. You're being kind. <laughs> that's true. Yes, that, that's that's an area you have to improve upon, no question about it. One out of two for Oliver Candy. He has 20. size mismatch too. Well, Thomas is playing mostly. Very interesting defense though by the Pacific Tigers. Looks like it's a triangle of two. So the three big guys, Barry, are playing a zone. And the guards look like they're defending the two Stanford guards man to man. It's not a defense you see very often. But the last time down it looked like triangle by the three big guys zone, man to man by the guards. That that's the respect that uh, Bob Thomason has for the Stanford guards. And, and the two guards that they, they defended were Mosley and Weems. Take those guys man to man and zone it up with the other three guys. Williams has picked up his fourth foul, so he will leave Mahaffey. He will come back into the ball game for Bobby Thomas. And Stanford, conversely, a very good free throw shooting team, and Seaton knocks it down. See the guy who made the Pac-10 All-Freshman team uh, in his first year at Stanford and uh, has seen his minutes dwindle since then. And it has nothing to do with him. It's just that the talent level at Stanford has gotten that much better. Yeah, the Collins, uh, you know, two, two big guys and two great freshmen that they recruited here. One has been played, the other one's hurt. So it's tough playing if you're a big guy here at Stanford. And nice look that time down low to Andrews, who had the easy basket. Pacific not going anywhere. No, they're not. Now, let's see if, you, if they go three-man zone again and, and two-man to man. That's exactly what they're doing. Anders is a great defender. 82 steals last year. McDonald misses the three. And it's finally controlled by the big man, Oliver Candy. Now, that time it was Velisco playing man to man and Jacobson playing man to man in the other three zone. And there's the foul on Van Elswick from behind. Well, it's a well-drilled Pacific team, and they, they know where to look when they come down the floor. Especially in a tight game, uh, you want to make sure that Oliver Candy gets a touch on the ball. So Oliver Candy will go to the line for two. First, one of four for the candy man. Now Madsen comes in and Seaton will leave. Two of six at the line for Oliver Candy. He, he does have a tendency to fade back off the line. He, he doesn't really follow right through at the rim. A little bit better on that one, but uh, he's leaning backwards many times when he shoots it. Let's see if they go three-man zone and two-man man-to-man. It's an interesting defense. Now, right? there you don't is. see it very much. Now, see, Velisco and is playing is playing the zone at the top with Oliver Candy down low. That's all zone. And, and the outside guys are playing man to man. And Elswick missed the shot. We're going to get a foul. I think they're going to get Mahaffey. And Mahaffey's one of the guys that are zoning. So you, you've got Mahaffey, Oliver Candy, and Velisco playing a triangle zone. And then you've got Jacobson on the outside playing man to man along with Andrews. And you don't see that very often, is right. It's been very successful here, though, for the Tigers. Well, they're trying to slow down Weems. They, they, you know, it's a big concern of theirs. They don't want to go full zone because Weems will be wide open. Yeah, that's what 
missed the free throw. You know, the theory there, Barry, is let's force someone else to beat us and not allow Weems to get a real good look at the basket along with Mosley. These are the two guys that have been able to make three-point goals. One out of two for Van Alswick. Two-point lead for the Cardinal. 5.55 remaining. Jacobson has been very quiet here in the second half, much as he was for a good portion of the first half. Yeah, he's explosive, though, and uh, very streaky. He's just been well defended. A little candy over Van Alswick. That's too good. Yeah, quick move. Now, not much you can do about it. I mean, a nice job by Van Ellswick forced him out, but Oliver Candy knocked it down. He's got 23. Here again, the three-man zone. You, you look at Jacobson playing man-to-man. -man. See, Jacobson following the guys, and Andrews is going to play man-to-man. -man. They drop it down from Madsen. Too hard. Oliver Candy, just his presence did enough to spook that shot. Well, and a great save. See, Oliver Candy had presence of mind here just to extend and not foul. But you're right. Just him being there caused the miss. And I think this time Oliver Candy is going to be guilty. I think. Let's see. Well, wait a minute. They're going to get Madsen, I think. Boy, it sure looked like you made the right call first. I thought they were going the other way. I thought it was Oliver Candy. It, it is. is. They had a discussion amongst the officials. The inside official called Madsen. The outside official called Oliver Candy. Boy, here's the beautiful save by, by the big guy. Shows his dexterity and, and, and does make a, a fine play. And then comes down the other end and, and creates an offensive foul. So now he picks up his fourth. Went a long way with three. And Williams, who has four fouls, will come on for Olawa Candy. And Bobby Thomas and I would hope, I would think, would hope to get about three minutes out of Williams. I think Bob, Bobby and... Uh, you can bet when Tim Young comes back in the game or Oliver Candy comes back in, you'll see the other big guy. I mean, that's what's going to happen here. And you probably sit him uh, and Young maybe for another minute or so and try to get him in for the last three and a half, four minutes. And Elswick converts, and Stanford again has taken a two-point lead. Well, this may be Adam Jacobson time now because you really don't have that inside presence. So you may have to revert to your veteran in the backcourt. He may have to make a play if he can free himself up. But the Goggles doing a great defensive job on it. Oh, oh that, that, should be a, a, that should be a score. That should be. Yes, it should. They should count the basket. See if they do. No basket. Ooh. And a two-shot foul. Well, I agree with you. Sure look like it. Here's the, here's the play now. Was the ball... Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, the ball's right on the rim. I mean, I, I think that's, I don't think that's a very hard call. So Anders will shoot two. And that misses. Free throw shooting continuing to be a problem for Pacific. And you see the numbers we were talking about, 58 percent this year. And Anders misses them both. They get nothing out of that. And that, that could be obviously a, a big, big, big play here for the Cardinals. Well, Pacific's going back in the zone again, and, and the outside guys are playing man to man. Again, the, the three man zone, and Thomason and Anders playing the guards man to man. Weems, tough shot. Good position by Mahaffey. And a trap. Now Clark will come into the ball game. take Andrews out. So Jacobson moves from the one to the two and Clark will be the point guard. Jacobson has been empty in the second half, but he's had to take care of the ball much in the second half too. Five second call. So Clark comes in and immediately turns it over. Well, I gotta tell you another thing. That's a rule that I, I completely hate in college back. Why do we need a five-second call when we have a clock? I'd like someone to explain that to me. It's I mean, there's no there's no reason. Here it is late in the game. It's never called. They're not trying to stall. He's just dribbling the ball, trying to make a play, and you got a five-second call because you were closely guarded with the ball, and you did not interrupt your dribble. Williams forced that shot a little bit, but because it was so short, it came right back to Van Ellswick for the putback. 
And they will get all the candy back in the ball game immediately. Yeah, and that may trigger Tim Young to come in. It does. Well, Clark almost lost that one too. And that would have bought him a lot of bench time. And it may anyway. We'll take a timeout with 3.49 remaining and Stanford leads Pacific by four. We're coming back. you're looking for at a price that most only dream of. At your Northern California Lexus dealer today, Get out of the ordinary. Rent a convertible for just $45 a day at budget. Barry Tompkins, Dan Belwamini back at Maples Pavilion. 349 remaining in the ballgame. Cardinal lead by four. And the free throw shooting has been the Achilles of the Tigers. And you look back on the three losses they've had, as you said, a two-point loss, a one-point loss, and an overtime loss. And you could probably lay it right at the feet of the free throw shooting. Well, no question now, though, coming out of this uh, timeout, uh, execute and try to get something good. This is a, obviously a pivotal possession. Go right back to Ottawa County for UOP. All the players with four fouls are back in the ballgame. Lee and Young for Stanford, Oliver Candy for UOP. Jacobson for three. No. And Lee the rebound. Well defended again by the Cardinals. I think that's the one hallmark of this game, really, for both teams. Excellent man to man defense, excellent team defense. And now Pacific is going to pick it up straight man to man. No triangle in two. Anders went for the steal, couldn't get it. And Lee, they gave him a gap, but he took it to the rack and missed it. Well, Arthur does give you that. Uh, aspect of, of the game that you may lack without him in there. I mean, he can take it strong to the goal. Drop it down oh. for Oliver Candy. Count the basket, fifth foul on Young. Well, the individual matchup of the big man was simply no contest tonight. Well, this is what Oliver Candy can do, and we've seen it all night. Excellent back to the basket player. I mean, he, he's got the hook, the turnaround, very quick with his movement. Tim Young, who just made a cameo appearance here, uh, coming back in the game, was sitting with the four fouls. And of course, Pacific uh, smartly went right to the big guy, Oliver Candy, and he picks up the fifth foul and gets the score. Can't convert the three point play, though. And again, it is free throw shooting. Going to be Stanford ball. Incidentally, Young leaves with 12 points, not the eight that we. Uh, Showed you a moment ago, 12 points for Tim Young tonight. Interestingly enough, though, when Young went out with eight minutes to play with his fourth foul, Stanford led by two, and when he came back in the ball game, they led by four. So the question begs, uh, how much did they miss Tim Young? Well, both teams really uh, played well with their big guy out of the game. I mean, Pacific did it uh, did it earlier with all the candy sitting out uh, in the first half, and they they played very well at the end of the first half. So it shows you this team, both these teams can play with their big guys out. That rebound was Oliver Candy's 10th rebound, so he's got another double-double and very impressive one. 23 points and 10 boards, not to mention about five block shots. I think you go right back door. That was a beautiful defensive job anticipating that time on the interior by Stanford. And Lee may have tried it. Yeah, I did. Anders did a nice job defensively. Mike 
Montgomery with an incredulous look. Well, Lee was bumped, and I think Mike felt he was bumped, which caused the travel. And uh, did, no question, he traveled, but the, did the uh, did the bump cause it? Well, are yeah. they going to get a double foul? They might. No. <laughs> For a minute, he called double foul. I did too. Well, I called Van Elswick on the foul. Young on the bench, a frustrating evening for Tim. Yeah, he'll be back. No, no, yeah, it's one game, it's early in the year. Got the first one, a rainbow. I think that ball may have come down a little wet. I think so. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? I mean, that was up there. Oh, he's only got 26. And he's four of nine from the line. Probably could have had 30 easily, 30 32, if he made his free throw. One out of two. One point game, 154 remaining. And now man to man by Pacific. You're going to stay man, no triangle and two. Going to get Jacobson for a push on the baseline, I believe. Interestingly enough, this game is being called a lot closer in the second half than it was in the first half. Usually it's the opposite. Yeah, I definitely thought in the first half that there was, there was more bumping going on, but as the game uh, went on, a little bit more conservative, and uh, there's been a lot of fouls called inside. Well, if it comes down to a free throw shooting contest, you got to give the edge to the home team. Yes, you do. Now Stanford's got some people here who can make free throws and uh, so far uh, the difference in the game has, has been from the line and, and the ability of the Cardinal to rebound the ball. Williams gets them both. It's a three point game. But really it's been almost a Herculean effort by Michael Olowokandi just to keep the Tigers in this game. Absolutely because Jacobson has not been a factor in the second half at all. There he is again. That was Anders. What a shot by Anders. Now, now remember Anders is a guy who's an all-conference player who's been hurt. So he, he just kind of feeling his way along. Excellent defender, as we said, 82 steals last year. Lee, the penetration, a reach in. And that, that's going to be all of a candy. And that'll be it for him. That was a good call. He clearly reached in and grabbed the arm. Look at all of a candy. I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think he agrees. He's got the old on the uh, arms going to be folded. I'm standing here and I'm not leaving. Now, now he's going to leave. Well, he played quite a game. Now, he's going to get a well-deserved round. Of, we're going to see it right here. Ah, boy, it wasn't much, but, you know, there was a reach. I mean, that's a time you just got to let him go with the four fouls. Don't, don't even let the official make the call. Mike is still hoping that maybe the official did not make the right call. Yeah. He's saying, well, wait, the coach is talking to the official. Maybe it really wasn't me who he called the foul on. Well, let's see. You know, never leave the court when you have your fifth foul until the official tells you to leave because they may forget. No, they didn't forget. So, he played quite a game. Huge game. 26 points, 10 rebounds. Big time player. Big time player was getting better. And, and really a, a class move by the by the Stanford fans. It all gave him a, a well-deserved round of applause. So Arthur Lee will try to extend the lead and does. It's a two-point game, 118 remember, remaining. Now Mike Montgomery has won a ton of games at the free throw line late. Remember that name, Michael Oliver Candy, because he'll be at the next level. And I think a factor in the NBA. And if he keeps playing like this, he may end up to be a top seven or eight pick. Got a chance. So we'll take a timeout with 118 remaining in the ball game. Stanford leads it by three. Pacific will have the basketball when we come back. This is the Sports Channel One Minute Clinic with April Powers, head trainer of the Leukemia Society Team and Training Program. Keeping your commitment to running is important to maintaining your fitness level. Here are a few tips to help you keep on track. Set specific goals. Sign up for a local fun run. Hire a coach. A running coach can help you set realistic goals and monitor your progress. Keep a running log. Put all those tough workouts in writing. Put a star by each completed one. Run with a Walkman. Your favorite music can make those miles fly. Focus on the positive. Each running step is an accomplishment. Pat yourself on the back. 
Run with a buddy or group. Every area has a running club that welcomes beginners. Run with your dog. Get the pup in shape too. Many local running trails allow dogs. Explore new running courses. Most areas have running paths or parks that offer safe, scenic routes. There's the story, 64 Stanford, 61 Pacific. Pacific will have the basketball, 118 remaining, one possession game. Free throws really the difference in the ball game. Except now, uh, if Oliver Candy, obviously you'd rather have him in the game, but he's the worst free throw shooter for Pacific and he's not in the game. So foul shots now may come up. If, if Pacific gets to the line, they may be a little bit more adept at making them. And Jacobson, I think a key guy. Now, now here's somebody that I'm sure Bobby Thomas had said, hey, hey Adam, now's the time that we've got to look for you. We've got to run some play. When he starts at the point and he releases the ball, they'll try to set some screens and bring it back to the ball. Well, he's empty in the second half, 0 for 3, and he hasn't had a good look yet. See Stanford they... playing excellent defensive. Going to get a foul on Matson down low. That will send Williams to the line for two. And here again, game coming down to who can score at the line. Now an opportunity for Pacific to set their defense, and obviously they need to make some throws now. Not get it done. Williams, 59% at the free throw line coming into this game. Well, had it not, as you said, had it not been for free throws, Pacific would be undefeated this year. They missed both. Well, it's interesting that Pacific shooting 58% at the free throw line, and that's with Jacobson, who gets there as much as anybody else, shooting 84%. So it tells you everybody else is really hard shooting in the low 40s. Matson lost everybody to the foul. All right, this is a Pacific team that is as good as any Pacific team has ever been. And, and you're talking about a school that goes way back to the late 60s and early 70s that had guys like Keith Swaggerty, Bobby Krulis, John Gianelli, another great name in Pacific tradition, Del Demps, uh, Ron Cornelius. They've had some... Uh, very good talent at the University of Pacific. They had a guard there that probably was the smartest guy, really one of the smarter basketball players that ever played. You know who that was? Leonard Armado. Oh, there you are. Yeah, now you know why he's so smart? He's an agent. He's on the he, other he, side. He's Shaquille O'Neal's agent. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what? This guy, this guy was, he, he probably played point guard too. Well, these point guards know what they're doing. It's now a two possession game. That's one out of two. 41 seconds left. And he had a look for a minute. Anders will pull the trigger. He won't get it. And now they'll have to go foul. Yeah, in a hurry. Got to get him right away. And Jacobson finally does get it. And put Arthur Lee at the free throw line. Last time Stanford won a Pac-10 championship, and of course it wasn't called the Pac-10 then, it was 1963. And you remember the center in 1963. Tom, Tom Dose. Dose, Tom Dose. Was the center in 1963. Yes, sir. Yes. Arthur Lee, 92% free throw shooter. Stanford, 75% as a team. And that's the difference in the ball game. Lee knocks them both down. And now Pacific needs some divine intervention. Yes. Like a three-point shot, a steal, and another three. Not out of the question, but uh, chances are slim. Well, I think what Stanford has done to Jacobson in the second half is significant. Yeah, that, that has really been the story of the game and uh, the Tigers' inability to make free throws. But uh, Jacobson shut down in the second half and uh, really Pacific that had a very good three-point shooting first half came out the second half and really did not shoot it well at all. In fact, have not 
made a three-point shot in the second half. So they go bagel from the three-point line in the second half, where the first half they, they, they made seven, to my recollection. What a reminder, we'll be at the New Oakland Arena on Monday to catch the Pete Newell Classic doubleheader, which begins at 6 o'clock. It'll be Indiana and the USF Dodgers. I think USF can play Indiana tough in that ball game. That should be a very good ball game. And, of course, BYU and Cal. And Cal uh, gets their first win uh, last night. BYU pretty in a rebuilding situation, but two very good basketball games Monday night. Mahaffey missed the long three, and a fight for the rebound. Matson and Anders is tied up, and the arrow is Stanford's. Well, California, talking about that BYU game, we'll get a couple of players that have been long anticipated in Berkeley. Carlisle and Kilgore, two guys who can score. If you ask anybody around the conference about California, and they said, don't worry about them. They're going to be there when it's all done. Yeah, I agree. I think they're going to be a very good basketball team. And, uh, in fact, Circus King had a real big game against Portland State. So good win for the Stanford Cardinal against an excellent UOP team. And, uh, Bob Thomason's team came up a little short, but you sh they showed tonight why I think they're one of the finer teams around. I mean, Michael Wakandi, congratulations to him. He had a superb evening. 26 points, 10 rebounds for him. Stanford wins it 67 to 61. And it was a game, as we said, that was exactly as we thought it might be. Pacific came here and really battled him, only to wind up a six point loser. That's a wrap for us from here at Maples Pavilion in Stanford. From my pal Dan Belwomany, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody. Let's celebrate the action heroes of everyday life.